Praise God. Thank you. I've written my notes. Uh, just bear with me. Just open that. I encourage you to keep your Bibles handy with you. I'm, uh, I'm not as charismatic as Pastor or Pastor Freddy. I'd like to use my notes when I'm sharing. So I'd encourage you to keep your Bibles handy with you because we'll read um, a few verses and I'd want to encourage you to look deeper into it. And, uh, and that's, that's my focus. And as I was sitting there, I was reminded, I was walking by here, I was reminded of this song when we were uh, little. And that's probably going to be my message as well. It says, um, Peter and John went to pray. They met a layman on the way. He put out his arms. He put out his palms and he asked for some arms. And this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Right? But I have a funny story to it. When I was little, I, I was taught by my Sunday school teacher, because it rhymed well, that Peter and Paul went to pray. So till the age of 13, probably 12 or 13, I always used to sing, Peter and Paul went to pray. <laughs> so until I read the word and I realized that it was John, not Peter, uh, not uh, Paul that went to pray. So a lot of times I think it's important for us to read the word and let the word speak to us. Amen. So I'll read this for you and the word will probably come up online as well on the screen. So it's Acts chapter 3 verse 1 to 10. I'm going to read this for you. Acts chapter 3 verses 1 to, uh, 1 to 10. And it says Peter heals the lame beggar. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John and Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get some money from them. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and the ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the uh, temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. It's a familiar story that we have heard. And I want to emphasize a little bit on this. A lot of times we look at this word, we've learnt it from childhood, we have learnt it in our Sunday school classes, and we have seen this from one angle. Right? We've looked at it from the disciples' perspective. Always the disciples went and healed and they were transformed. And the lame man was transformed. Right? And I'd I'd want to give you three different angles to look from. And I'd, I've titled this message, The Recipe to Rise Up and Walk. The Recipe to Rise Up and Walk. Because there's not only one story that is happening, there's three different angles to it. So let's look at the first one. Um, before I go in, Venkat brought up the right word, and it is for sure that the word of God is given to us like a two-edged sword. It pierces us, transforms us, redeems us, changes us. Amen? Amen. And I believe that as we read, as we read the word in detail, it will give us this transformation. It will make us understand what Jesus is. Jesus is quite detailed in his wordings. He never gives, the, even the ands and the thes are very significant. And only when we try and understand this a little bit, that we'll expound more. So 
whatever the lord has given me i want to share with you so i'll i'll we'll look at the first angle in verse 2 it says now a man who was lame from birth was being carried into the temple called beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple now if you see a lot of times we overlooked being carried there was somebody there who used to carry this lame man who was not probably is probably his friend he was being carried from his home from his place where he was and being put every day this person could be a friend could be someone this person faithfully did it sometimes it's easy for us to have friends who can bring us to church right there's people who are faithful you can bring them to church you can do it for a day it might cost you some money you might do it for a while and then you might get forget but this lamb and this man was lame from birth it says he was lame from birth for somebody to do it on a daily basis it has to take something even though his name is not recognized in the bible god has given us the detail in it it his story could have been the lame man story could have been without this detail being carried up it could have said this man was lame and he was at the temple gate but the word of god is very detailed he gives honor to people where nobody gives you honor and i commend everyone who's sitting here who are sitting in the quiet praying interceding standing in the gap where no one's watching you because god honors them we might look at them you might look at me because i'm standing on the stage but there are many of us here who are sitting in places where nobody is wanting to go and pray and intercede and stand the gap god loves them and i'd encourage you my brother don't be discouraged don't be disheartened for the work that you're doing is powerful in the hands of god and only because of this person who carried him from home to the temple gate every day that this man's story the lame man's story was able to be told in the bible if it was not for him would if even though he doesn't have a name it his story could have not been told this person made a deliberate effort to pick him up from there and put him in the temple gate right so I'd, how does it apply to me you may ask some of you are being faithfully doing this bringing somebody to church going and praying for people doing something insignificant we might think that only coming up on stage or doing something here has significance or preaching has significance but god honors the people who are doing it in quiet nobody is watching you there's power in that and you're being a testimony like the lame man lame man story is great but there is someone behind that story as well and god honors them amen but you also look at it from a lame man's perspective the lame man had somebody who was faithful with him right you might ask how many uh, how does it apply to me the lame man had somebody who was faithful with him who stood by him who was willingly able to be picked up put him there he had people around him it could be one person it could be many he had people around them who stood with him in you and my case it's important that we have people who believe in you when you are a nobody who believe in you when there is nothing working for you you believe in you when there is nothing absolutely going right for you and still standing by you and say brother i'll pick you up brother i'll carry you brother i'll i'll go with you i'll walk with you only iron sharpens iron 
Sometimes we're looking for friendships who are in high positions. But recognize the people who are around you, who are praying, who are standing in the gap, who are sitting with you to grow with you and say, brother, you are the people that I want to be with. And as believers, when we start having people around us who help us, who grow, as coal lights up, we all will be with fire. Anointing will move through our life. Amen? So now we looked at a nobody. God has given a detail to be a somebody only when you read it in detail. If you don't read it in detail, you will skim through it like a Sunday school child and you will just look at the one angle. Amen? Now, let's look at the second angle of what the word of God says. In verse 2 it says, Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple called Beautiful. He was put every day to beg from those going into the temple clothes. Now let's look at the lame man himself. When you look at the lame man, the lame man didn't come there because he was brought. If somebody has to pick you up, you have to have a desire. You can't sit at home and say, I'm lame from birth, there's nothing going to work for me. I need to, I don't need to come here. He could have chosen to sit at home. He could have chosen to be where he was. But every day it says, every day somebody picked him up and put him there. So for him to be pick him up, say for example, if I ask you this, that if, I'd, say, I'd take the example of Rodney Uncle, he's not willing to come to church today. If I go to says, drag him and come, will he want to come? No. He has to have a desire to be able to pick up from church, picked up from home, brought here. Only if has a desire that he will choose to come in. Without a desire, God cannot move in our life. You need, to, that's a basic criteria for God to move in our life. Is unless and until I have a desire to understand and know or get out of the situation, God cannot move in your hands. He cannot move his hands on you. It's by choice. Everywhere you see, God has given us a free will and it is by choice that we get out of our situation. Now it doesn't stop there. The man had a desire but he also chose to physically do something. He allowed the person to be carrying him. Sometimes if you don't know, when somebody is going through pain, when somebody is going through trauma, stress, you're so full of it that you cannot see anything. You, you're so filled with pain that you don't want other people to carry you up. That willingness to say, pick me up, carry me to the place, was a deliberate effort he made to humble himself and say, I am willing to be picked up. I am. He made a deliberate effort to move from his situation. And this is, this, is, this, is the, this is what God desires. You cannot, we cannot sit in a place and say, God, heal me. There has to be a desire for you. And you have to do something about it for God to move in your life. So all this is happening while the disciples are also doing their prayers and doing all the things. So we've looked at one angle. And how does this apply to me? You may ask. God's given each one of us a gift. We have to learn to shift ourselves from our situation. The first instance, we've looked at all angles because we have people from at different stages of our life. We have people who are new to Christ and you want to help in the church and to do something for Christ. God commends you. And we are like that person who has no name in the Bible, who is doing something, bringing the person to church. Or we might be like the lame man 
who has a situation we all go through situations we all go through sicknesses we all go through troubles but the lame man chose to move had a desire that he won't dwell in his situation won't dwell in his sickness won't dwell in his condition he chose to move from there and say no i will not allow myself in the same way if you are in a situation if you are in a condition if you are going through stuff in your life choose to say lord i will not accept this as my portion god i will not accept this as my portion this is not my portion i am not going to live like this only when we choose to say i'm not going to live like this that god can move proverbs i want to read this for you proverbs chapter 8 verse 34 proverbs chapter 8 verse 34s it says blessed is the one who listens to me watching daily at my gates waiting besides my doors i'll read that again blessed is the one who listens to me watching daily at my gates waiting besides my door he was exactly doing that he was weak he was lame he had gone through a lot of things but he chose even though he could have been sitting in front of the doctor shop or the physician shop at that time he chose he could have chosen to sit at the marketplace but he chose to sit at the gate of beautiful why you because he had a desire so it's important for us to understand that uh, when you have conditions when you're going through stuff in your life it's important that you don't dwell on it whatever the situation may be and i'm going not going to name a condition or a situation we all are at different stages of our life and unless and until we are willing to take ourselves out of it and say lord i will not accept this you have given me a desire to move out and i will do it everything in my ability even though he was say even lame from birth even though there was somebody to help him use that opportunity he picked up the opportunity and said there will be a time and unless and until we choose to do that we cannot see the hand of god move now let's look at the and i'll i'll finish soon i won't take much time and um let's look at the obvious angle we'll spend a little bit time over there and as pastor is teaching us on discipleship pastor has been wonderfully teaching us on discipleship and i um and i was going through this and i was looking at it from a point of view how the disciples practiced what jesus had taught him so look at let's look at verse 1 it'll come up there the verse 1 it says one day peter and john were going to the temple at a time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon if you look at it they were going to the temple for prayer it is at the time of prayer that they were going when you look at it the dis- the disciples had discipline sacrifice and consistency discipline sacrifice and consistency unless you have discipline sacrifice and consistency you can't do it on a regular basis they were going every day to the temple praying why there was a time when uh, they were told them sit there i'm going in to pray he could have gone by himself but he chose to take them because he wanted to show them something and they saw something that Jesus was doing something powerful. Jesus was in the presence of God. He was not doing fancy things. He was not doing 
he was not reading bible verses like the pharisees he was not doing anything fancy he didn't preach or he didn't do anything in front of his father he was in quiet and he was saying lord if it's your will let this cup pass by and he was being real with his father but the disciples at that time were not trained enough they could not keep their eyes open they were sitting there but they went to sleep in today's context we see we always say the saying practice makes a man perfect practice makes a man perfect over the years they were once disciples who could not keep their eyes open who could not spend time who could not pray for one hour that's what the word says who could not spend time and seek the presence of the living god why they had the jesus with them they had all the support with them but when jesus went up they learned everything that he had taught him and when he learned when they learned everything that he had taught him they started to put it into practice and they were practicing every day to go into the presence of god seek him walk in righteousness walk in holiness and without that it's impossible to please god and i want to say i want to mention this to you that with true discipleship i cannot be just a sunday church goer it requires me to have a personal fellowship with the living god i can be the person who's just has the name helping or i can be in the situation of that person of a lame man always in need but when god has given me the wisdom to become a disciple i need to learn to fellowship with him only that intimacy can bring power and authority not because i know a few verses not because i know to preach not because i'm going out and showing something that i'm doing it is because you have an intimate quiet relationship with the lord and that's what brings strength power and authority now let's look at a few more things that they did in verse 3 it says when he saw peter and john about to enter he asked them for money peter and john were entering the temple gate and he asked them for money now let me bring your focus back to the lame man again right so if you i'd, I'd want to ask you this question how many of you have names we all do right you have each one of us have names when we were little we had a whole ceremony for naming a name of a person is the identity of that person but this person even though he had a name everyone like peter had a name john had a name but his name was not mentioned because his condition was much greater than his name and people saw him for his condition he was so degraded in his personal life because of his condition that nobody knew him by his name imagine you and me if i'm not known by my name if i'm known by a person who's always limping or a l- person who's not always been able to do things imagine that his situation was so degraded that he was not known anymore by his name but that's what jesus had taught the disciples to overlook there would have been people who sympathized with him there would have been people who were walking by who sympathized with him and said hey brother here's some money hey brother i'll pray for you because they're going into the temple gate a lot of people would have done that 
but when the time came and this recipe for rising up was being prepared at the appointed time peter and john were entering and when they saw him the disciples caused him to break free from his degradation what did they say to him they said peter and peter looked straight at him it says in verse 4 peter looked straight at him as did john then peter said look at us so the man gave them their attention expecting for some money this person was degraded in state had nothing to look forward to he had lost his he has lost he want, he had a desire but he had lost the purpose for asking for healing he said he was just looking for money just meet my need for this day but the disciples caused him to break out of his situation don't look at your situation don't look at who you are at this very stage let not your condition determine who you are it told them the disciples caused him to break free of that and ask them to focus on us focus on me is what he said and many a times when you look how how the disciples in the early days the disciples as well when jesus called them they were fishing they were doing their stuff but they were disappointed but they could not find any fish when jesus called them he said come i'll show you where to fish initially they said oh we've tried everything didn't work but jesus says come i'll show you and when they let their nets down they caught fish they learned from their experience that when i keep my focus on jesus there is power there is miracles there is transformation and he was they were practicing this and i would want to bring this uh, to our attention that uh, the disciples didn't give this man what he wanted because they had learned that from jesus jesus always when people ask for something he he gave them something else in the same in the same passage we can see we will uh, will 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 also look at this that it's important for us to understand this that if i consider myself as a disciple of christ i cannot let people who are hurting around me go unnoticed it's important as an individual as a disciple of christ that when people are around me who are hurting who are in need i cannot pass by them it's important to give them life it's important to give them life in john 10:10 10:10 it says this in john 10:10 10:10 it says this a thief comes to steal kill and destroy but i have come so that they may have life and life in abundance i have come so they may have life and life in abundance this lame man was asking me give me some money but the disciple said i'm going to give you life life in abundance you're not only going to walk you're going to do your chores you're going to pay your bills you're going to look after everything i'm giving you more than it sometimes you might just look at the healing the things that can happen because of that healing is much greater and the transformation that can happen in a person is much greater and that's what jesus came for jesus came that he might transform and give us life and life in abundance and i want to ask you all this that when we go reach out to people the disciples did something powerful they practically lived it and when they lived it they saw power people saw power and authority right they didn't stop at that they didn't say look at my look at me they didn't stop at uh, 
say silver and gold have i none but i'll give you in the name of jesus christ walk but after that they also if you read in verse 6 it says then peter said silver and gold have i none but whatever i have given you in the name of jesus christ walk in verse 7 it says the disciples also helped him out by holding his right hand pulling him out and instantly the man feet and ankles became strong instantly the man's ankles and feet became strong which means that he did not pray and leave him there they did not declare a word they did not pronounce a word and say leave him there they helped him to stand up they practically helped him to stand up how does it apply to me you may ask a true disciples not only pray for people who are in need who are, who are who are help who go help around but they will practically bring them out to the power house this is the power house where they will be strengthened and a lot of times we might say brother i'll pray for you brother sister i'll pray for you and leave it there but god wants you to go to the next step pick them up bring them to the house of god that they might be refreshed renewed transformed recharged and living the fullest because this is the place where god dwells amen and i'm not going to take uh, a few more time i'm just going to read this part just the last part of how the onlookers reacted the disciples practically lived whatever jesus had told them and i've given you the example of how they lived it and how we can apply it to our life and a lot of times it's not it's not big to go preach the gospel outside it just takes a desire it just takes your ability to step out in faith and go in and this is what peter says to the crowd after this in verse 11 it says this while the man held on to peter and john and all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called solomon's colonnade when peter saw this he said to them fellow israelites why does this surprise you why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk the god of abraham isaac jacob the god of our fathers has glorified his servant you handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before pilate though he had decided to let him go you disowned the holy and the righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you you killed the authority of life but god raised him from the dead we are witnesses to this by faith in the name of jesus this man you see and know was made strong in jesus in the, in it is jesus name and faith that comes through him that has completely healed him and you all can see it you see they didn't have to do much and say come 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 they just lived the life what jesus told them they called people out they declared the word they practically lived it and that became something like a spectacle for people around they said i want this power and a lot of times we think it is too fancy to go preach the gospel outside it takes it takes just the desire to go out and stand there and speak to people and you'll see the brokenness in people willingness i was disappointed uh, a few few uh, last week when i had gone out i just want to leave you with, uh, with an example and i was uh, on the street we uh, we go out as a group and i was on the streets when, when we were sharing the gospel one person there were some people that were receptive and one person um i was speaking to him just 
had no desire for god and he said this you people are very hypocritical is what he told me you pretend and your pastors have pretend to have big mansions big places but i have seen some of these people in strip clubs is what he told me i have seen some people doing things that you'd not be doing how do i trust you and that pierced my heart spotted that we live a life as jesus taught and i leave you with this quote that i wrote yesterday the most powerful way of preaching the gospel is by practically living it the disciples did it observers were amazed by its power and were drawn to it thank you thank you brother rowan let's uh, put a hand together for brother rowan for sharing wonderful word this morning with us uh, we saw through the word wonderfully presented uh, we saw a man who was actually in need a lame man to be specific and this lame man uh, as we know the issue that he had the need that he had was his lameness but when he's been presented here it is a lot of years have passed by he has lived a lot of years in his life now he doesn't know what his need is yes he knows the need he he has tried a lot of ways we also saw one of a great friend who always used to pick this man bring him to the temple gate so that he can be just asking for arms or something like that he has come to a state where his focus has changed he has given up hopes of him getting healed what he's asking now is like i just want a living can you give me some money and that is what he has ended up with just begging we can actually get into different like we are so many people sitting here we can get into different shoes you can get into the shoes of the lame man you can get into the shoes of the friend who was helping this lame man you can get into the shoes of the disciples too there was a friend who was there to help out there was a friend who was in need and there comes a disciple or there are come there comes two disciples of Jesus Christ who are wanting to live as brother said while they were here with Jesus they didn't even have the potential enough to even spend some time with Jesus or do what he wanted them he wanted the disciples to do but after he is going they have actually learned they are actually remembering whatever jesus has taught them and now they are putting it into practice they are living a life of a disciple and when they come there they are encountering with this person in need yes the uh, the person just asked for some money and i'm pretty sure they might have something to give but they can see through the need of that person the person is just asking for money this time if the disciples would have given the money the need would have been met the current need would have been met but the next day this lame man would be in that temple gate just sitting there asking alms to a different kind of person we as disciples of christ we as children of god are we able to see through the need of the fellow believer or are we able to see through the need of the next person who is asking us this lame man would have had very few friends because he can't do much when other people can jump leap do things this person is poor fellow he just has the only aim of getting some money and just making his living but the disciples 
they with the power that they have possessed the authority that jesus has given to them they are commanding rise up and walk we have been given that authority too but are we able to practice many a times we find us guilty we are not able to do that but disciples at least they are making sure at least they are giving the authority through the authority they are passing out that power they are also introducing this lame man to a friend who will never leave him alone yes he might have had friends before but he is being introduced to a friend who can lead him to eternity can we all rise up to our feet as we surrender to the words that we heard this morning some of us know about this true friend some of us have experienced and tasted that friendship some of us would have been very new to this friendship we have a friend in jesus whom on whom we can lean on any time of the day a friend to whom we can tell all our blabberings a friend who we can like talk as much as we can share all our joys share all our sorrows are you committed to that friendship and wonderful thing that he mentioned was discipline sacrifice and consistency that is all that this friend needs from us are we able to discipline ourselves to listen to what he wants us to do or what he is wanting from us are we able to sacrifice some things for this friend are we able to be consistent it's not just that when i have a need i'll run to this friend but no every day i will have a communication with this friend the singer says this way what a friend we have in jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege we have got to carry everything to god in prayer our worldly friends will be patient with us for a while our worldly friends will give give their ears to us for a while but after a while everyone will get tired get into the shoes of that lame man if you would have known this friend before maybe he won't have had to rely on anyone else this morning what state are you in Are you tired of sharing it with your worldly friends? Are you tired of just sharing your pain with others still with no result, still with an emptiness, still left with that grief, still left with that need of yours that nobody else can address? This morning we are going to lean on that friend. Can we all sing this in the silence of our hearts? Remember that friend. When is the last time that you spoke to that friend? When is the last time that you thought that okay i could do these things with him what a friend we have in jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to care Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we offer for faith Oh, what needless pain we bear You don't have to take that pain on us All because we do not
because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. Dear Lord in heaven, we thank you for this time, Lord, that you've given us, Lord Jesus, Lord. We first of all, thank you, Lord, for enabling Brother Rohan to share this word to us, Lord Jesus, Lord of our Father, Lord. Let us not leave these words, Lord, just within these four walls and leave this place, Lord, above our Lord. Help us to take it back home, Lord. Help us to take it back to our families, Lord. Help us to take it back to our workplaces, Lord. This way, we, wherever we are placed in, Lord, above our Father, Lord, this, let these words be ringing in our heart, Lord, above our Father, Lord. Help us to be a true disciple, Lord. Help us to do what you want us to do, Lord, above our Father, Lord. Many a times we toil and toil, we are just left with nothing, Lord of our Father, Lord. We work hard, we do a lot of things, but we are just left with emptiness and a grief and a need that we are still begin with, Lord Jesus, Lord. This time, we as your children surrender ourselves to the word that we heard, Lord of our Father, to the deliverance that the lame man received, Lord Jesus, Lord. And after he was healed, he was not silent at all. He went into the courts. He went into the temple along with the disciples. He started praising and lifting and praising God for everything that he had been going through. This morning we want to dedicate our lives and surrender our lives, Lord. Lord, we have tasted you in the past. And we want to taste you each and every day, Lord, of our Father, Lord. Without you, we don't want to go into this week, Lord. Without you, we don't want to enter next moment, Lord Jesus, Lord. Because we can't live without you, Lord, of our Father, Lord. I surrender each and every one of us who is present over here. Lord, you know their hearts. You know their cries. You know their desires, Lord, of our Father, Lord. We have nothing to give other than you, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord, you take complete control in their lives, Lord, Abba, Father, Lord. Whatever burdens that they are bring, brought, brought over here, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, you take complete control over their lives, Lord, Abba, Father. You meet them at their point of need, Lord. You meet them wherever is they need you most, Lord Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your promise that you'll be with us till the end of the time, Lord. And we just want to lean on to it. We just want to stick on that, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, this week, Lord, above Father, Lord, I pray as we are entering, Lord, help us to enter with authority, Lord. Help us to enter with the anointing, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord, we pray for the families who are traveling, Lord. Let your journey mercies be upon them, Lord. We pray for the individuals, Lord. We pray for Shell's dad. We pray for Susan's parents and everyone who is traveling overseas, Lord, above Father, Lord. Let your presence go with them, Lord. Let them reach their destination safely, Lord, and glorify you, Lord. We pray for the individuals, Lord, who are going through interviews this week, who are going to put in their applications with the last ray of hope, Lord Jesus, Lord. I pray, Lord, you meet them, Lord, at that point of need, Lord Jesus. If they are waiting for something, if they are waiting for a breakthrough, if they are waiting for a miracle, Lord, I pray this week we are blessing upon each and every one of them, Lord, above our Lord. We are almost finishing five months of this year, Lord, above our Lord. As we will be entering a new month this week, Lord Jesus, Lord. Help us to enter with joy, Lord. Help us to enter with thanksgiving, Lord, above our Lord. Even when our situa situation looks, Lord, grim, Lord, above our Lord. We want to trust in you because you are the author and the finisher of our walk, Lord Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.